Hi everyone, my name is Jack and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. The case of Samantha Fraser is a clear example of the fact that a monster cannot be re-educated even by a qualified experienced psychologist, and at the first manifestations of cruelty one should run away. Such people do not change, do not deserve a second chance, they are capable of the most terrible deeds and believe in their impunity. The tragedy played out on a quiet Australian island, Philip, located near Melbourne, in the summer of 2018. But let's get to the story in order. Adrian Basham is a native of Australia. He was born in 1973. The boy was brought up in the family of a policeman, and although in the field of view of law enforcement agencies in his early years he did not fall, now many are sure that his cruelty and attacks of uncontrolled aggression are connected with his childhood and family. Looking ahead, Adrian's father, James Basham, upon learning of the brutal murder committed by his son, not only did not condemn him, but based on his police experience, gave him instructions on how to behave to try to avoid punishment. Samantha Fraser was born in the suburbs of Melbourne in the summer of 1980 in a friendly and loving family, Jeanine and Travis Fraser. Parents in every way to support their only daughter, trying to give her a good education and reveal her talents. Samantha studied well at school and also actively engaged in sports and repeatedly received awards for her high achievements. Then the girl entered a prestigious university at the Faculty of Psychology, which she graduated with a red diploma. During her studies, she continued to engage in sports in particular, acrobatics, gymnastics, and dancing, which allowed her to lead the student cheerleading team. After receiving a higher education, Samantha got a job as a psychotherapist in a large medical institution, where she quickly gained the respect and trust of colleagues and patients. This profession was her calling. Samantha truly loved what she was doing. Samantha and Adrian first met in late 2005. At first, they had a friendly relationship, which soon turned into a romance. Many of those who were personally acquainted with this couple did not understand what could connect these young people, so different in everything they were. Samantha was kind, open, and sociable. She could always find a peaceful way out of any difficult situation. Adrian, on the contrary, was quite harsh and rude in communication, characterized by a fiery and confrontational nature. But despite this, a year and a half after acquaintance, the couple officially legalized their relationship. The newlyweds bought housing in the suburbs of Melbourne, not far from the house of Samantha's parents. Soon, the man got a job in a large company engaged in the development of mineral deposits. His work was associated with constant business trips and travel, because of which he was not often at home. It is safe to say that this is the reason why his and Samantha's marriage lasted so long. Adrian turned out to be a real domestic tyrant who tried to control his wife in everything. He not only demanded unquestioning obedience, but also had some oddities that could indicate that he had a mental disorder. For example, he maniacally insisted that the house was always in perfect order, and it concerned not only cleanliness, but also the location of things. We are talking about such small things as the location of books on the shelf or toiletries in the bathroom. Any change could instantly trigger his anger and aggression. Samantha, being a psychologist, knew how to smooth out conflicts and hoped that in time her husband would change, become more calm and restrained. In addition, the marriage gave birth to three common children, daughters Jemima and April, as well as a son Rex. But even the appearance of heirs did not soften the character of Adrian. In 2014, another family scandal ended in hand-to-hand -hand abuse. Then Samantha kept silent, did not report to the police, and did not tell anyone about what happened. She naively believed that this would happen again, and loved ones and colleagues did not even guess that her spouse raised his hand on her. However, a year later, the story repeated itself, and Adrian again beat his wife. This time, Samantha decided that it was the last straw. In addition, her husband's constant temper tantrums and his manic desire to control her every move were driving Samantha crazy. She wrote a statement to the police, reporting that she was beaten by her husband, then took the children and moved to the house of her parents. In the spring of 2017, the spouses officially divorced and their family home by court order got Samantha and the children, and soon they returned there. 
However, Adrian did not plan to leave his ex-wife alone at all and continued to pursue her, poisoning her life. The young woman did not feel safe and was in constant fear. Fearing for her own life and the lives of her children, she obtained a court injunction to prevent her ex-husband from approaching them and trying to interfere in any way in their affairs. But this did not stop Basham. He settled nearby, trying in every way to annoy Samantha. According to a friend of Edrin, he promised to take away from his ex-wife everything that is dear to her, starting from the house and ending with children, as well as openly threatened physical violence against her. Shortly before the tragedy, the man again told his friend that Samantha would soon pay for everything. At the same time, he looked threatening, but the friend did not take these words seriously until he learned of the woman's death. Living in constant fear and nervous tension, Samantha equipped her home with an alarm system, installed bars on her windows, and placed surveillance cameras outside her home. She admitted that she was afraid that her ex-husband might break into her home and harm her or the children in some way. About a year after the divorce, Samantha began to feel that her ex-husband had calmed down and cooled down a bit. He became less frequent in her sight, which gave her the illusion of safety. Samantha even began to have an affair and began to make plans for a new happy life. On July 22, 2018, Fraser celebrated her 38th birthday in the company of close friends and a beloved man named Wayne. According to the memories of those who shared this holiday with her, she looked happy and was quite calm for herself and her loved ones. A few days before, the new chosen one had proposed to the woman, and after the wedding they planned to take a long vacation and travel to distract themselves and forget about problems. The next morning, Samantha took the children to school and was on her way to work when she received a phone call from someone she knew, warning her that Adrian was in the neighborhood of her home. Samantha was concerned about this, but decided not to panic, just to be more cautious. She was due to face her ex-husband in court in a domestic violence case in a couple weeks, and she feared that he might somehow retaliate against her for the lawsuit. The woman shared her worries with her best friend in a phone conversation, but the latter reassured her. After that conversation, Samantha was never seen alive again. When Samantha did not come to school that day to pick up her children, the teacher, who knew about the difficult situation in their family, decided to call the police. The law enforcers immediately went to their home to check everything, and at first the situation looked as if the mistress had not yet returned. But when the officers of the law decided to check the garage adjacent to the house, before them opened a terrible picture. The body of the 38-year-old homeowner was hanging from the garage door fixture, and on the whole, the picture might have looked like the young woman had taken her own life. But Samantha's appearance was as if she had been run over by a truck. There was literally not a living spot on Samantha, and the hair on her head was wet and falling over her face, covering it. She wasn't wearing the same clothes she had left the house in that morning, and her shoes were missing altogether. It was obvious that someone else had been in the garage, and that someone had tried to make it look like Samantha had voluntarily passed away, but had made a lot of mistakes. For example, there was an overturned stepladder lying next to the body, but the rope was so long that the woman's feet were touching the floor. Samantha had severe bruising under her eye and on her temple, and her entire body was covered with abrasions and hematomas received during her lifetime. In addition, as the forensic medical examination later determined, the deceased had suffered a severe head injury, so she was either unconscious or already dead when she was hanged. Under the fingernails on her hands, forensic experts found blood and epithelial particles, which means that the victim desperately resisted and scratched her tormentor. There were also numerous washed-up traces of blood and small splatters on the floor, walls, and on the body of the car in the garage. Later, blood was also found in several places on the rope from which the deceased was hanging. In the evening of the same day, Adrian Basham arrived at his father James's home on his motorcycle. He looked worried, and his face had several fresh scratches on it. When questioned by his father, he was evasive, and regarding the abrasions, he explained that he had scratched himself with tree branches while riding his motorcycle without a helmet. He then took a large pack of wet wipes and started wiping his vehicle arguing that he wanted to remove the gnats that had stuck to it during the ride. As a former police officer, his father immediately suspected something wrong, and his professional instincts did not fail him. 
When detectives showed up on his doorstep the next day with questions about his son, claiming he was the prime suspect in his ex-wife's murder case, James realized what was going on. At first, Basham Sr. stated that he had not seen his son, and after buying some time, instructed the heir on how and what he should say, how to behave in order to be able, if not to get out, at least to mitigate his punishment. Adrian followed his father's advice, listened silently to the charges read to him, and obediently went to the station, with the support of the lawyers already hired by his father. Adrian at first categorically refused to cooperate with the investigation. He did not deny his guilt, but simply kept silent, ignoring all questions. Nevertheless, the collected evidence was enough. Fresh scratches on the man's face did not escape the attention of the investigators. As suspected, he had been scratched by Samantha in an attempt to defend himself, and blood and epithelial particles were found under her fingernails. The suspect's sweat marks were also found on the rope from which his ex-wife's body was hanging. After examining a motorcycle belonging to Adrian, washed-up traces of the deceased's blood were also found on it, and a bloody woman's blouse was found in a garbage can outside his father's house. Apparently, he tried to get rid of that evidence, but didn't have time. Surveillance footage that Samantha installed outside her home shortly before the tragedy shows a man leaving the crime scene in a hurry on the day of the murder. Although his face was concealed by a hood pulled over his baseball cap, there was no doubt that it was Adrian. The chronology of the last day of the victim's life was reconstructed bit by bit, and the resulting picture was striking in its brutality. So while no one was at home, Basham managed to break the lock of the garage door and get inside where he waited for several hours for the return of his ex-wife. An unsuspecting Samantha drove into her garage, and Adrian attacked her before she could get out of the car. Fraser fought back desperately, as evidenced by the scratches on the perpetrator's face, but the forces were unequal. He beat the victim until she lost consciousness, and then, to cover his tracks, removed her blood-stained blouse, replacing it with a black t-shirt found in the house, and doused her head with water to wash the blood from her blonde hair. Adrian then put a rope around his ex-wife's neck and hung her from the garage door. To be sure, he put a stepladder on the floor next to the body, but the length of the rope was not calculated. Adrian cleaned up the bloodstains, but he missed the small spatters that were literally everywhere. This is mind-boggling. A young woman and loving mother of three was found dead in the garage of her own home. The killer tried to make it look like a voluntary death, but numerous clues said otherwise. In addition, the condition of Samantha's body indicated that she had accepted martyrdom. The saddest part was that the victim had lived with this man for many years, endured moral and physical abuse, raised his children and hoped that he would change over time. When Adrian realized that there was no point in denying or keeping silent because all the evidence pointed to him, he changed tactics. Basham stated that he was indeed at his ex-wife's house that day, but just wanted to talk to her and convince her to withdraw her domestic violence lawsuit. Allegedly, the conversation didn't go well and fists came into play, but afterward the man, he said, left, and Frazier was alive and conscious at the time. The defendant's lawyers insisted that their client was guilty only of battery, and after that, in their opinion, Samantha herself took her own life. But, according to relatives, Samantha would never do that, and did not leave her children. Besides, she was soon going to remarry and made big plans for life. The murder trial did not take place until the end of 2022. The sessions were attended by the older children of the former spouses, who condemned their father and asked for a fair punishment for him. The youngest son was not present in the courtroom. The child decided not to traumatize unnecessarily. In addition, the boy was panic-stricken afraid of his father. The defense attempted to prove that the defendant acted spontaneously, being in a state of affect. But this version failed because Adrian waited several hours for his victim, prepared things and objects for the crime, and tried to get rid of evidence. The final verdict on this case, the court announced only in February 2023. Adrian was found guilty of brutal premeditated murder and sentenced to life in prison, without parole for at least the next 30 years. Jeanine and Travis Fraser became guardians of his and Samantha's children. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel. There are many shocking stories ahead. 
I'll see you again.